Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, we are talking about an over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this unbelievably gorgeous, it is now a, it is a Thursday evening already, I believe. Good Lord, how did that happen? September 12th, 2024. And uh, I am out here in the, in to, out here to witness the moon rise tonight. I think the moon will be a little bit about over half full and should be coming up right about here. So I am out here playing witness to the moon. <laughs> while I still can and uh, so I thought that this might be an apropos uh, essay to share. So I have been following this fellow goes by the name of Dave Pollard and his website or his blog I guess his blog is called How to Save the World and uh, he is a quite the prolific writer, and, and I've started to do several readings of his, but, but, I, but I don't think I've ever gone through with it. I really appreciate uh, what Dave is doing, which is chronicling the collapse of a planet. Uh, I, I, I don't know. He's just, uh, just, just a little bit too... I don't know what the what it is. He's got a little bit maybe uh, the the John Michael Greer complex in him. So anyway, uh, I've always pulled up short, but uh, it it is time to uh, give Dave Pollard the credit due this man, and uh, we're going to talk about witnessing. And before I do this. I am going to say, I, I, I am going, Dave, if you're listening to this, I am going to take the uh, editorial license to edit out a few paragraphs about those little kerfuffles over there in Gaza and Ukraine. Doesn't mean that I necessarily disagree with anything you're saying, but uh, for whatever reason, I have just made the decision on this channel that uh, there's enough people talking about the, those little kerfuffles, uh, which aren't so much a distraction from the collapse of everything. They are perfect illustrations of it, but uh, I, I'm going to let other channels uh, cover those little kerfuffles. So I am going to edit the parts of Dave's rant about those little kerfuffles, which really isn't, isn't much. But uh, today in How to Save the World, Dave Pollard is going to talk about witnessing. Witnessing. <clears throat> Take it away, Dave. As long as I have been chronicling the collapse of our global industrial civilization and its systems, I have described myself not as an activist, someone determined to do something about collapse, but as a witness to this accelerating and uneven disaster. And that is as good an articulation about what I am doing uh, at Collapse Chronicles or attempting to do is anything I have ever read could not have said it better myself. So uh, Dave, brother, uh, hallelujah, I'm with you 100% a witness to this accelerating and uneven disaster. The word witness 
comes from an ancient root word that symbolizes three meanings. <clears throat> to see, to say what is seen, and to understand what is seen. Hence, we also have view, vision, wise, wisdom, idea, story, history, provide, advise, wit, and a host of other essential words all deriving from the same root. Of course, the three meanings are not all inherent in all the words that have sprung from this proto-idea. We can see things both in the sensory and metaphorical sense of the word without necessarily saying anything and without necessarily understanding what we have seen. Two people can quote witness the same apparent happening such as the you know the accelerating uh, collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet you know things like that uh, two people can witness the same apparent happening and yet derive completely different views and ideas of what was seen and I don't know why he's necessarily putting that in the past tense. I think the, uh, what is it, the present progressive, is that the tense that uh, I am usually speaking in? <clears throat> this concatenation, sounds like uh, he must be a, a fan of, uh, of Terrence McKenna. This concatenation of meaning has given has even given rise to two distinct negatives unwitting meaning they did not understand what it meant and witless witless meaning they could not understand what it meant due to cognitive impairment I is witless the same as clueless? Uh, witless and clueless are pretty much close cousins. I have long argued that what we believe, what we want to believe, what fits with our existing conditioned worldview, not necessarily what aligns in any way with the facts or evidence, i.e. with what we see. That doesn't mean that we're all witless. There are sound evolutionary reasons why human brains are conditioned to find patterns and to disregard what does not fit within those patterns to dismiss things and not see them at all if we cannot make sense of them. Devoutly religious people will see one or more God's hands at work in many things that happen, for example, and their belief system will be untouched by any fact that contradicts those interpretations. What we want to believe will affect what we actually do believe and hence what we see as having actually happened. And again, he continues to speak in the past tense. Uh, I, I would change that. Hence what we see as actually happening. People with strongly held beliefs, dogmas, and rigid ideologies will be quick to assert in testimony, in conversations, in op-eds, etc., that their own belief 
about what happened and why it happened, again, about what is happening and why it is happening, and will be utterly intolerant of and deaf to any other possible interpretation of what was witnessed and of anyone who says or understands differently. You know, it is my way or the highway. And then uh, Dave ventures off over there into those little kerfuffles across the pond. Um, you know, uh, obviously Dave uh, takes more of the Caitlin Johnstone position on those little kerfuffles and uh, has a problem with the mainstream media uh, story behind them. <clears throat> Other, meaning he doesn't agree with what he reads about those little kerfuffles in the mainstream media. So this raises the question, what exactly does it mean to witness something? How can I presume to call myself a witness to the collapse of our entire civilization when I have not, and probably no one can, witness that collapse in its entirety firsthand. I would argue that it is because over the past 50 years, I have seen mountains of evidence in the context of the history of past civilizations that ours is collapsing at an accelerating rate and that no one and no group of people, no matter how large and smart and rich and well organized, can prevent or even mitigate that collapse. My conditioning as a nature lover and as a student of history and culture and human nature is such that I must do my best to witness this collapse, to see it happening, say what I think is happening, and try to understand why it is happening. Well, I'm glad to see Dave is back to the uh, back to the present perfect or whatever the that uh, that verb conjugation is. Uh, and uh, once again, that is exactly how I would define uh, my role here at Collapse Chronicles, is I do my best to witness this collapse, to see it happening, say what I think is happening, and try to understand why it is happening. And then, of course, uh, Dave and I and a bunch of other people share this information with anybody else who wants to understand why it is happening. <clears throat> I do not presume... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, he goes, he veers off back into the little kerfuffles across the pond... Uh, la, 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 la. Anyway, moving on. And perhaps more importantly, my writing attempts to discern not only what is seen by others firsthand to be happening, but why it might be happening. Not because people are simply evil or insane, but rather as a combatant's automatic and trained response to a lifetime of cultural and, cultural and biological conditioning under ever-worsening circumstances of our pressure cooker 
overcrowded, falling apart civilization. My job and our job, maybe he's talking to me, I believe is not to condone or condemn, but simply to understand. Of course, as someone who has been conditioned to believe, we have no free will over what we do and what we believe. I would say that. And, uh, and, and uh, Dave Pollard talks a lot about free will and that whole argument, guys, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the free will thing, uh, I, I, just, uh, I, I just get bored with it pretty quick. Uh, in, in, anyway, that's why I never talk about it. I find the whole subject pointless and boring, whether or not people have free will, but that's just me. But uh, Dave, if you go check out his, his blog, he's got a whole lot to say about that. But anyway, okay. <clears throat> that does not imply that I cannot be outraged and am not outraged by what is apparently happening. That is part of my conditioning, too. And... I, 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 and so at this point, uh, I, I, I am unclear whether he's talking specifically about the kerfuffles over there in Gaza or Ukraine, or if he's talking about the larger picture that they are illustrative of, uh, but I will read it from the perspective of uh, the larger picture. Uh, anyway, but while I completely understand the expressions of outrage from those personally affected by ghastly events, I have absolutely no time for those not personally affected who vent their outrage and righteous indignation to assuage their own neuroses and uselessly rile up others, inflicting your hate and fear-driven mental illness on others is an act of cruelty, and it has no value other than to dangerously and destructively self-perpetuate. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and, and, and again, I'm going to assume for purposes of this reading that he's talking about uh, all sorts of examples, including those two little kerfuffles over the pond. Yet, even when it comes to these hordes of ignorant, opinionated spewers of hate and fear, I believe my job is to witness and understand their dysfunctional behavior, too. So-called social media seem to have evolved specifically to attract and inflame these sad people in order to sell them crap that they don't need, and thus they encourage behaviors that will probably make their psychological illnesses even worse. I have met a number of these people whose uninformed and misinformed Second-hand opinions, likes, piling on, trolling, and emotional outbursts bear all the signs of deep trauma, childhood neglect, social isolation, and abuse. And I'm starting to resemble that remark a little bit, Dave. It says a great deal about our crumbling civilization that the social media cesspool 
has become by default the primary means by which so many people meet their needs for attention, appreciation, and reassurance, needs they cannot fulfill through genuine, coherent, practiced communication with other human beings face-to-face, -face, says Dave Pollard on social media. Uh, I met Dave Pollard through, I don't know, I can't even remember what social media uh, I, I met Dave Pollard through. Uh, it might have been medium.com, it might have been resilience.org, uh, but uh, th this is the problem with social media, but this is Dave's rant, not mine, and we're going to wrap it up so I can get out and enjoy witnessing the moonrise. Okay. This is what happens, I guess, as a civilization enters its final stages of decline. It was inevitable, but that does not make it any less tragic. Our means of coping with the increasingly unbearable reality of chaotic collapse seems to entail us somehow becoming less human, less capable of authentic human appreciation, empathy, and understanding, like rats in an overcrowded laboratory cage fighting over the dregs, increasingly we can no longer tolerate, no longer witness, and no longer care. There you go. Thank you, Dave Pollard, for clarifying what it means to be a witness to the collapse of everything. But I Before it all collapses and comes crashing down, it is quite possibly the most gorgeous month of my entire life, September 2024. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up, uh, scoop out a bowl of my fresh homemade salsa that I made from my tomato garden and uh, sit back and enjoy a beautiful moon rise. I, I see it. Ah, shit, it's that willow tree. I, I, I've got this entire sky and, and I see the moon rise right in the middle of the willow tree. So uh, I'm going to have to move my perspective to get out there and witness the moon rise over the collapse while I still can. Bye guys.